For a standard normal distribution, find P of Z less than negative 1.71. Okay, first of all, let's understand the notation. P stands for probability. The parentheses stand for the word of. So, so far we can read the probability of a randomly selected z-score, which would be the boundary along the horizontal axis of the standard normal curve. So we can go ahead and pencil that in. So let's put it, we know zero is the mean on a standard normal distribution and the standard deviation is one. So if the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, you get a scale that looks like this, just one, two, three to the right, and negative one, negative two, negative three to the left, uh, because of that standard deviation of one that we have for the standard normal distribution. And then we're able to see where we can place the negative 1.71, right about here. And so that is our X boundary, or in this case, a Z-score boundary because it is standardized. Now, um, because of the less than symbol, I did shade to the left. So it's this region that we're looking for. We want the area under the normal distribution density function. And it's important to also realize that the entire area under the curve is a total of one, and that from the middle to either side is 0.5. And so this little area here we know is going to be less than 0.5. It's good to think about these things ahead of time because it can be a little confusing um, when you're looking through the tables and things like that. So now I'm going to go to the z-score table in the reference packet. It's all the way at the bottom, and it's uh, organized into three different pages. The first one is the negative z-score table, which gives areas to the left of a negative z-score. Then there is a second page that has positive z-scores, and the area to the left are on the inside of the table. And then a third one, which is something I created because I notice students get a little confused with signs sometimes, and this is another way you could approach it. What this table does is just ignoring the sign of the z-score. You look it up in the table, and what area you find in the center of the table or in the middle of the table, in the cross section, will represent the smaller side of the divided um, area under the curve. So notice that here where I have my boundary, there is a small side to the left and a larger side to the right. The side to the left of this z-score is smaller and the side to the right is larger. So the side to the left is what you would always find in this absolute z-score table. So I will look it up here, just ignoring the sign of the z-score, negative 1.71. I'll just ignore the sign and do 1.71. So I wanna be in this column where the last digit is one. And then I want to be, I'm going to go all the way down to where I have 1.7 uh, in the, at the beginning of the row. So in the second column, the answer is 0 0.0436. Now, thinking, of back, thinking back to what I said earlier, I was expecting this area to be less than 0.5, which it is. So that's a decent answer. And now I'm going to also show how to do it in the negative z-score table. Since we did actually have a negative z-score, we can use the negative z-score table, which is more traditional. Same thing, we want to be in the column that has one as the last digit up at the top. So the second column from the left, and it's pretty much the exact same thing, only with a negative on it, 0 0.0436. Okay, remember that the negative z-score table and the positive z-score table always give areas to the left of a boundary, okay? Now, um, you can also do this with technology. You can use the normal distribution in Excel, norm.dist, and then put in the boundary, that's the X, negative 1.71. 
which is a z-score here, again, because this is standard normal. The mean for a standard normal distribution is always zero, and the standard deviation for a standard normal distribution is always one, and we always choose true for cumulative. Okay, now just, just a tip, this, you only put the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one if you're dealing with z-scores or if you are told it is a standard normal distribution. Remember, there are many different normal distributions with different means and standard deviations, but the standard normal distribution with the z-scores, that one and only that one has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. So let's see what we get here. So notice that when you round this answer to four decimal places, you get the same answer as we got from the table. 